Hi, welcome to the bathtub. This is the old masturbator. You can tell it's me, except no substitutes because I'm wearing the special International Bathing Alliance t-shirt. Don't forget, you can always join the International Bathing Alliance. It costs nothing and it's worth nothing. It's absolutely worthless, absolutely worthless. And I don't even send you a piece of paper. I send you an e-copy of this so you can print it out yourself. That's how cheap we are here at the bathtub. But it basically it entitles you to read, read great books in any bathtub anywhere in the known universe um, and we don't cover the unknown universe. We cover the known universe. This is Boris Johnson, my bathing buddy. I put, I, get, I got him a subscription years ago, even though he's an idiot. I got him a subscription to the special, our special club. It's for people from all over the world. We got people all over the place. We got people from Saudi Arabia and Japan and Korea and everywhere, everywhere that they have bathtubs and books. We 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 welcome everyone with open arms. We are we are a totally open society that's worth absolutely nothing. Anyway, um, did I did I play the bathtub music? I don't know. Did I play? Did I play singing in the bathtub? Hold on. I almost forgot to play the the song that's that's got us locked up in litigation with Tweety Bird and, and her, her her hack lawyer Rudy Giuliani. We're we're not afraid of them. They're going to come after us this year. We don't care. Um, and uh, and that's all we do here at the bathtub is we try to read books pointlessly with, for no no valid reason whatsoever, um, and then we try to avoid litigation. That's our two our only two ideals here. And then wear our t-shirt. Um, thanks to the Ferbers for this wonderful Christmas shirt. I never take it off. It's starting it's starting to tell. You can tell. You can start to tell I've never taken it off. We're doing a very short one. These are all very short. Um, I got all these books stacked up all over the place. And uh, this is part of a the theme show is if you like such and such, then you will like such and such, uh, such and such. So this is kind of, you know, if you if you like Harper Lee's, um, what the hell is that book called? Um, to Kill a Mockingbird. If you like To Kill a Mockingbird by Harper Lee, then you might well like The Heart is a Lonely Hunter by Carson McCullers. Uh, I don't know if... Um, I think this probably came out before. This probably did come out before uh, To Kill a Mockingbird. It came out in 1940. I think she was a pretty young girl when it came out. And uh, it has a similar feel, a similar feel to, to Harper Lee. Um, I like to, to Kill a Mockingbird. I read it as a kid. I read it as a Reader's Digest condensed book when I was like 12 or 11. 10 maybe. I think I'm even 10. It was like the Reader's Digest. And I remember not being able to put it down because I thought that it was, even though it was edited out of all proportion. And I read it later when I was growing up. And then I, not a few years ago, I, I reread To Kill a Mockingbird for some students I was helping tutor. And they, you know, they basically teach that book every single school. Seems like that's all anyone can read is that To Kill a Mockingbird in high school and The Great Gatsby. Anyway, I reread it for them and working reading through it with them. Cheers, pure mountain water, no pixels. We, we dump a few crate, uh, we dump dump some quaaludes into these once in a while, but so often I forget. I forget how many are in there. There's no quaaludes. That's a stupid joke. Don't let Grandma get offended. We don't do drugs here at the bathtub. We do like bourbon. When the show's over, we have a nice, we like bourbon. The Heart is Lonely Hunter. Okay, so this is 1940. I read this in high school, and I really loved it. I remember reading this, and it's sort of a, it, it's, I think the colors is sometimes associated with, with what's called Southern Gothic. We talked about, uh, we talked about uh, O'Connor. Um, why, why can't I remember her name? Um, the... Uh, Wise Flannery O'Connor, Flannery O'Connor, uh, Wise Blood, a hilarious book, and her short stories are hilarious, and her stuff is very dark and twisted, like not as twisted as McCarthy, but they're similar nightmarish c scenarios, um, and she's sometimes associated with them. I think, rereading this, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it not as much as I did when I was a kid, but it's not quite as nightmarish. It's a bit strange. She writes about strange characters living in some southern town. And uh, the central character is a girl, just like the girl, the center of, uh, of uh, uh, To Kill a Mockingbird. And her name is Mick. And she comes. Her, her family runs a boarding house. And she's got a lot of brothers and sisters she has to take care of. And she wanders around the town meeting all these kind of weirdos and characters. 
uh, the central one is a guy named Mr. Singer. This was made into a movie which I've never seen. I believe Alan Arkin plays Singer. And Singer is a deaf mute. So he can't, he doesn't speak. He sometimes writes in hands. And the opening of the book is about a relationship between Singer and a large, overweight Greek man who's also deaf mute. And they have this very intense relationship. And, and they live together and they have their whole life together. And in the opening 40 pages or so, the Greek man starts to lose his mind and gets put into an asylum. And this man named Mr. Singer, I think he's Jewish. I think they refer to him often off, off on as, as he's a Jewish man. He's, um, he's, he's lonely. He's just de deadly lonely. Great title, The Heart is a Lonely Hunter. And it's about him really becoming this kind of magnet for all the people in the town who are all, who are all equally lonely, like Mick who's just going through, she's just getting into uh, puberty and so forth and becoming attracted to boys. And a man who runs a hotel, uh, runs a, a, a diner, a diner whose wife in the course of the opening half of the book dies and he's left alone. And who else? Those are the main, oh, there's, a, there's an old man, a, not that old, a, a black doctor. What was his name? Mr. Dr. Copeland. Dr. Copeland. And Dr. Copeland is a very intelligent black doctor who is disgusted with the way he's, blacks are treated in the South and how they're treated by this, the whole American culture. And he goes on to uh, several diatribes about it. And he's angry all the time and he's disgusted, but he still feels comfortable when he goes home, to, goes to see, visit his friend Singer. And he's, he's one of his children. He has several children who aren't talking to him because he went through a divorce. And he lives a sort of lonely, angry existence so pretty interesting he's a pretty interesting character and he, he becomes a sort of a opportunity for McCullers to to allow this kind of anger about racial issues to, to come through the book and there's a couple long passages about it particularly when the Copeland's son one of his one of his children goes to prison it's a pretty it's a it's a quite sad book but it's a very beautiful book I would say it's it's absorbing, and one of the reasons I'm comparing it to uh, to uh, to Kill a Mockingbird is it's kind of a really good book for teenagers. You know, it's a really well written book, and he he she gets at emotional uh, situations and emotional relationships in a way that I think young people would really enjoy. I enjoyed it particularly when I was in my teens, and. I enjoyed it now as well. I enjoyed the whole book. I really, but I, it's also the sort of book I'm always looking for books to give to young people. And it's a book I would give to someone who is like 14 or 15 or 16 and who is just starting to read maybe adult books like To Kill a Mockingbird. Anyway, it's a lovely book. Carson McCullers is one of the writers I loved when I was a kid. And I'm reading through her again. And um, this is a very good book. Okay. Anyway, good bathtub read. And we'll, we'll go back. There you go. As the old master bather, I'll try not to wear the shirt anymore because I have to probably wash it. Stay safe.